Benji, open that door right now! Yeah, I'm trying. Come on, Benji. Benji, open that door! Come on, come on, come on. Now that my secret identity has been revealed by so many of you, I decided to address the latest major event here at the headquarters of Music Impossible. Since nobody less than Valentina Lezitsa commented to my video on the moonlight and damn, 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 didn't Benji warn me to leave all of this, 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 this musical or whatever side project behind and focus on my real missions so many times. But I tell you what, this mission is far from impossible. I would even go as far as to say that this is what my real mission is about. Jumping from one building to another, clinging to an airplane taking off. It's all so easy compared to change a musical system in which we all are trapped in one way or another. Yes, even you. So let me try to unchain you once more. Hello everyone and welcome to this channel that is much less dedicated to rescue the world from dangerous villains than it is to bring you back to the origins of the music we still love so much today. What did Beethoven hear when thinking on the adagio of his septet? When writing the first notes of his fifth symphony, what did Schumann have in mind with his Traumerei? And in order to showcase the differences between what I believe could have been the authentic intentions of the composers of the past, to let you experience, so to say, how much of a difference our today mainstream performance practice might have taken us away from that time and those thoughts, from time to time I do compare our own recordings with those that represent, let's say, the mainstream versions of today. As I did make a comparison of 8 bars between my Moonlight Sonata and that of Fonaldina Lizitsa. And so, Valentina replied. I was hanging outside the helicopter at the time it arrived, so I was first transferred a spoken version of it. Here it is. Congratulations. You managed to play two bars in tempo. Good progress. LOL. By the way, I did not give you permission to use my videos. Or is your knowledge of copyright not any better than your ability to read a metronome scale? My first reaction was something like You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! A message I converted into this. Dear Mrs. Lissitza, as you are very aware of the YouTube policy on copyright, you also know that in this case there has not been any sort of violation of it. In case you have time to watch some videos on this channel, you can also have the possibility to immerse yourself in the very interesting and beautiful research we are presenting here on the historical reading of the metronome. 
getting back to those two bars played in tempo after knowing what's the theory behind will also clarify that this example was used by no means as a critic to you or any other pianist. But it should have served to show in what the practical application and implication of our theory differ from another musical approach to then relate it to what is written on the score, the whole just for an educational purpose. We hope to see you soon on this channel and maybe for an eventual collaboration. And it is true. YouTube today is an almost over-regulated platform in terms of copyright. If fair use of any content wouldn't be possible anymore to be used without permission, then we wouldn't see channels anymore like this. So, I very much thought Valentina, whose smile, seriously, on her videos and pictures is always so refreshing to see, just had a bad moment. Didn't have the time to dive into the video which is I think extremely respectful to her. And so, to be honest, I didn't take it personal at all. With a channel of just over 30,000 subscribers, I know what it is to receive dozens of comments a day of people, you know, who better would take a course like how to activate my brain before entering YouTube's comment section. You know what I mean. So. I only can imagine how tough it might be on a channel 20 times the size of mine. But Valentina came back to my channel and instead of simply answering my message to her, she doubled down in a way that, honestly, left me a bit puzzled. At Charles Gauthier, by their logic, the historic concert of Deck 22 1808 would last seven hours. Well, I take it back. The performance like that would not last through the first page of any of those scores. The audience used Rotten X and other things like that instead of today's dislike button. It puzzled me because what triggered her so much to basically become one of those she herself kind of condemned a few years ago in an interview. And you can see, you know, some people are, of course, they are very unbuttoned when they're in privacy of their home behind the avatar. And I endured lots of criticism, you know, fairly or unfairly. So it, it helps you develop thick skin. You don't react, you know, with, to every little thing. Could it be the fact that her name was in the title of the video? But even that title reflected only respect for her amazing technical skills. She must have noticed the word even in it, directly suggesting that if she couldn't fix it, nobody else would. And didn't I make it clear that it was not only her who accepted the notation of these bars as a mistake, but almost all pianists? I'm doubling the tempo by playing 30 seconds, double as fast as the 16th, but Valentina Lezitsa, as all the pianists, are slowing down in this passage considerably. Or could it be that she, evenly skilled as a jazz player, as a pianist, immediately saw the huge implication of the message we bring on this channel to you. Since, indeed, in case we are right in our view on the historic use of the metronome, you know, where the ticks did not indicate the full note of the metronome mark, but the subdivision as is not only the way we still count in music classes today, namely 1, N, 2, N, and so on, but mentioned in sources like the 1816 Melzo directions, or even indirectly in Czerny's Pianoforte School, the implication is indeed that we actively disconnect the kind of super virtuoso renditions of music by Beethoven and others from the original ideas of the composers. In other words, that we are approaching a time in which the interpretations of music from Beethoven, Chopin, Mendelssohn, Schumann and so many other composers in the versions of Poligny, Argerich, Trifonov, Schiff, Van Immersil, Norrington, Gardner will be labeled as reflecting more the later 19th century practice instead of the wishes of the composers themselves. And yes, also the versions of Valentina Lezitsa. 
And why her name and the title of such a video? Because, in a way, she represents this musical system, if you wish, of today at the very top. Few people can technically do what she can. And for that, she's really to be admired a lot. And she's fully aware herself of her unique technical abilities. Yeah, but still, you know, every time I have to prove with this piece, especially in comments for the first year about the comments, we're all, this is recording which is sped up on video, right? <laughs> but that was always a story because technique is given me in such an easy way that it's not difficult for mm -hmm. me, okay? So I have to pretend that it's difficult. But yet, again, without any critic to her work, nor that of others, there are, even for her, many metronome indications, real tempo indications, that will remain unreachable forever. Even a piece that she, of all pianists, eventually might have been able to play in the modern tempo reading of the metronome is Beethoven's Hammerklavier. But even here, she decided, because she's not only a great technical player, but knows how to make music as well, to not use Beethoven's 138, but instead go down to about 108 to 112. As she did not play the famous adagio of the opus 106 in Beethoven's 92, but in 72. And as many other musicians today, she might even not know the existence of so many metronome marks that simply are pointing to ridiculous speeds of over 15, 16, 19, even 25 and more notes a second. Even in Czerny's Opus 299, one has to play up to 19 notes a second. With a clear message by Czerny to play an exact tempo, by the way. And looking into Valentina's life a bit, I came across this very nice interview in which it became clear to me what it took for a pianist of her caliber to become who she is today. Because people ask me, okay, how much do you practice? What do you do for fun? Well, I do nothing for fun. I practice for fun. And I practice between 12 and 14 hours. It's normal for me. As the kind of elite conservatory where she stayed treated children quite hard, I hope this fragment is not to be taken literally, but it gives you an impression, again, what it took to get where she is. Because, you know, this Soviet or Russian school of, you know, piano playing or music, it was all about, at the end, about winning competitions. It was almost like a sport. So we were trained to play one program, you know, whatever. Now it's early morning, but they would wake you up in the middle of night, hang you upside down, and you'd better play your Tchaikovsky concerto every single note, because <laughs> you're going to be sent eventually on competition and get a gold medal for your motherland. <laughs> That's how it was. And diving a bit in her life, so to speak, gave me an insight. Remember, I do come mainly from the early music departments of our conservatories. We were not particularly prepared to win international competitions. We never approached music like sports. But listening to her explaining her life, it gave me insight in what might have triggered her to react the way she did. And I cannot blame her for that. Having lived the life she did, sacrificed so much to arrive at her current point in life, all those hours, years of practice, the constant pressure today for staying on top of her game, practicing hours and hours a day in which she does not see her child, husband, friends, to arrive in the concert halls full of people who expect seeing someone doing incredible things with those black and white keys. Make them smile, amazed. Make them speak about you. It is hard. Yeah. 
and she worked for it like few others did. So I can live with the idea that she wants to protect this reality of life. It would be horrible in a way to think the next concert with Beethoven's Appassionata that it is not the real Beethoven she brings on stage, but so to speak the industrialized version of it. A version that requires hours of practice, still after learning the piece. A version that the audience expects from her and expects from her in a way that very well could serve as a CD recording. No mistakes allowed, no memory slips allowed, and always with a smile to give them, the audience, a glimpse of someone they all envy, they all somehow wanted to be perhaps. Not realizing how much it really cost on a human level to bring all of that on stage for a handful of dollars and some applause. It is the way the 19th century pianist had to show up. It is the reason also why Liszt quit piano stage, since even he had to obey the wishes of the public to see him exactly play like that, where he privately wanted to pay honor to the composer's wish, but it cost him his career. He had to stop to follow that path. He had to abandon even early 19th century, the stage full of clapping and cheering people that were there to see his fingers doing things they thought not to be possible. They weren't interested in what the composer had in mind. And maybe that is still true today. Who will tell? Benji, open that door right now! Yeah, I'm trying! So I understand why Valentina commented the way she did. And let me repeat it, I do not blame her for that at all. My door is always open to talk, to exchange ideas, to exchange doubts, fears even perhaps, because that I cannot deny. The idea of the WBMP, the whole beat metronome practice, is so simple to understand, so simple to apply, solves so many problems at once, is so well theoretically documented, as you also will see in the soon to be published book, that it will change the current musical system. There is no other way. And people like Valentina Lezitsa, in the future, will still be able to play in the Carnegie Halls for thousands of people who still will show up to see the amazing things she and other pianists can do on a technical level. But more and more we will go to an awareness that we better do not use music of the Beethovens and Chopins for that purpose. And so yes, if anything, we are actively disconnecting current mainstream Beethoven performances from being representatives of the authentic idea or wishes of those composers. I could apologize for that, but I don't. Because we as musicians have the duty to find the musical truth behind those magical notes. Every day we wake up must be a day we are grateful for what they have given to us. We own them, not only our respect and admiration, but we musicians must be willing to serve their music and their music only, even if that comes with the cost of not being seen anymore as a virtuoso. So, Miss Lizitsa, Valentina, door is always open here. We have an excellent coffee machine, a nice dog called Sibo, who is always happy to meet new people as well as a few pianos that I'm sure will bring you instantly in a world that, who knows, is there for you to discover. So guys, I'm sorry, I have to take this one. Good morning, Mr. Hunt. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, involves recovery of a stolen item. Okay, I have to go, Bye. Come on, Benji. Benji, open that door! Come on, come on, come on.